Guys, this is Nick Papa. I'm sure most of you know him. There's no need for any introduction. Pasi is a nest who decided to come to the UK as a senior carer and to the glory of God, she is a nurse. <laughs> There are lots of people that came to the UK as carers or support workers or are in the process of coming and would like to switch to become nurses and get alliances when they get here. Pasi and Nick are going to tell us everything. Do you regret coming to the UK as a council son in the first place? I can never have that as a regret because it gave me the opportunity I needed. No, if I say I regret, God should punish me. I don't regret <laughs> Well, in the first place, why did you decide to come as a carer instead of to come as a nurse? The first I was I wrote, I didn't get the required bank call. So I was in the process of getting here as a senior carer and I took the UK VI and got that one. So it was now a kind of like a dilemma whether to come as a, a senior carer or write my CBT and come as a pre registered nurse. But because I thought it was that, why not just give it a go? Go and then transition into becoming a nurse in the UK and I think because I also have a friend that was with me we just decided that we would give ourselves that challenge and come and we came. Apparently I was just looking for an opportunity to come to UK like to advance in career. It was the best way for me the opportunity that I got because um, I had written IELTS a couple of times. I had tried moving as a nurse but my IELTS kept held it, holding me down so I had written IELTS I didn't make the cutoff point. I already had my CBT so when the career option came it was like okay it's, it's a good start let me start from here and then when I get into the UK I'll see what um, what else I can I can do so it was for the opportunity for the advancement of the career you know changing countries better life in general yes would you say care work is stressful yes generally it's stressful I wouldn't lie <laughs> <laughs> oh my god why is this question funny <laughs> <laughs> If I say it is not stressful, I am lying. But um, for me, particularly, because it was a zero-hour contract, that means no work, no pay. Unlike uh, if you're in a nursing home or you're in a care home or you're with the NHS, you're on a fixed salary. So with domiciliary care... If you're in a care home, you're not on a fixed salary. It's still no work, no pay. Oh, really? Yeah. But the only no, difference but is You that... wouldn't really have days where they would tell you not, to, not just to come to work because you yeah, are yeah. no residents and things like yes, that. Yes. Exactly. So with the domiciliary care... If your client probably goes to the hospital, probably because he has a fall or whatever, depending on till when he comes out, no work. I think working in the UK as compared to Ghana in general is stressful. It is stressful. So if you are coming like, oh, I'm just coming. I know he's like stressful. <laughs> yeah, it is stressful. Like I barely have time for myself like I used to have in Ghana. I used to plan when I come out, trip here, go here, like, you can ask me, if I have two days off, my first day, I sleep the whole day, the following day before I even wash my stuff. How long did it take you to get the whole nursing registration process done? I actually started in September. It was in September, I made up my mind that, okay, I had saved some money. Okay, let me just write the OET because back home I was doing IELTS and I had made up my mind that I would never go for any IELTS again. You know, so I wrote the OET in September, I passed. Everything took me, by December I was done. So, so I you wrote, became a nurse, the whole process took you just like three months? Three months, yes. For me, it took me a year. A but year. a friend of mine had gotten that within six months. Like you can do it. It depends on you. The, the time you're supposed to register for the OSCE, we use the money to go for a holiday. That was our first holiday. What? <laughs> what? Where did you go? <laughs> we went to Scotland. How much so, did you pay for the OET here? 350 pounds. Okay. And obviously you are working, so it'll be easy. Yes. Money. The OET was, was in, wasn't even the most expensive. The part that, that, that was very expensive was the OSCE. OSCE How much did you pay for the OSCE? 950 that's they're about yeah and that's a lot of prepare, and how did you prepare for the OSCE? on your own it's a bit stressful especially when you're working as a carer you have to close from work you don't have much time so we had some material from there you know we have whatsapp pages that you have to join OSCE preparation but then 
people keep talking like so much noise you have to filter from so but i just get the pdfs and then we tried to contact the hospital in our local area we got we got in touch with someone that um a physiotherapist from our unit uh, got us in touch with someone that trains people in the hospital and then the upper hours crazy so we had some hours that we decided to train with them with but then going forward the money was a lot remember i contacted you and you told me about ielts medical so it they took 750 it was 750 pounds <laughs> it was a three days course here at ielts medical we've given doctors and nurses the tools they need to pass the academic version of the ielts exam as efficiently as possible whether you've reached above 7.0 in three sub tests but can't seem to crack IELTS writing. Whether it's IELTS reading that's the thorn in your side, it's okay, we're here for you. Learn more at IELTSmedical.co.uk. So IELTS so, Medical helped you pass? Yes, they did, they did, they did. Also, I also put in some other efforts like the YouTube channels and things like that, but it gave me the real case scenario experience of what to expect in the OSCE, and that was what I needed. And you other people, the OSCE at one time? No, I didn't actually. Mm-hmm. I failed one station. And that was because, just to let you know how detailed the OSCE can be, with the station I failed, it was more like a conflict resolution. And I didn't write that I was going to maintain eye contact. I told you I wrote it three times, right? You didn't write it three times. You wrote one station twice. Yeah, I wrote one station twice. Uh-huh. It was it was stressful. Like, imagine this is suppository. You didn't get suppository. You have to rewrite. I wrote. I I went to sat, uh, sit for it again, and then they said the same thing. I didn't push it well. I was like, at that point, I was like, suppository. In the in the guidance, they said push two to four centimeters or something like that and my finger is more than two centimeters if i didn't push at all it should be more than two centimeters i was like i was so it wasn't annoying but i was kind of pissed off but just because i said i didn't write that i was going to maintain eye contact with the client and i got very upset i was like so i'm writing and i'm supposed to write maintain eye contact so that's how detailed the oski can be that was that was just one of the shocker for me how much is it if you're rewriting that station it's like half 400 and either 300 and something or 430 i can't remember it was stressful yeah. we were taking a train from our place to the exam center we were on a train for four hours before we get there they need to book a hotel spending nights in a hotel from the hotel to them the exam center to you take car you pay come back then train back before you go to work so it was very stressful going there three times the third one when i was going i had to change the hotel because i was like let me change the environment it's maybe it's the hotel that is making me out <laughs> so i had to book another hotel I was supposed to get my pin like almost immediately. My GP, this was one thing that also really, really delayed my process. So when I was in Ghana, I had done my medical whatever with my GP and had submitted, but they said it was outdated because it was done a long time. So I need to get a current one. And since I'm already in the UK, I should get it for my GP. Here I go calling my GP to say, okay, I need a fitness to practice this for you. And this guy said, who is the NMC to ask him to give clients details to to them? That he's only supposed to give my health status, whatever, to me. So he cannot write any letter to them. He cannot fill the form. Went back and forth, told me that the NMC is incompetent. I'm like, what is happening? I called the NMC to say that. Okay, you guys asked for something from my GP, and he's calling some kind of rules telling me that you're not supposed to ask for a document concerning someone's health status from him he's only entitled as a breach of confidentiality he can only give that to me and not to any third party and in this case nmc is is a third party so they told me to just get a private gp to do it and i had to pay 100 pounds for that because it was a private gp you know and some of the processes we didn't know the right way because we were using our surgery here for the very the health check and it was taking a long process, not knowing that if I just reference someone in Ghana, like a doctor that knows me in Ghana, they can easily do that. We put in the process before we went for the holiday. We came back after three months when we followed up. They said we should do stuff like they sent us another form to fill. But then I asked them if I can use a, a doctor from 
my home country and they said yes i called nnc to ask them if i can use a doctor from my home and they said yes so i just referenced one of my doctors that i work with i sent an email address the following day she said nick i'm done i was like you are done something i've been waiting for the past three months well aside that it was it was a smooth ride it was really smooth right the only thing i'll say is that if you want to ride the oski and you don't have any support system someone like me you're doing domiciliary care you don't work in the hospitals you don't have such um experience then you really need extra extra training from ielts medical and things like that and then you should be intentional pay attention to details if not you'll just end up writing over and over again over little things that are not necessarily because how would like how how do we say maintain eye contact does not make me a good nurse like come on <laughs> you know can't so was the employer very... where you were doing this no 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 no. it was a very big secret um since i already had made up my mind with the challenges i was facing in my job i had just decided that, okay it was the time for me to do it i didn't tell him it was self-sponsored and when i got my pain I... a moment of silence for that <laughs> that night it was a breath of fresh air i started dreaming uh, now it was felt like reality because this is something i'm pursuing for two years now now two years since back home it was it was it was really 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 refreshing to get it you know that eagerness has had, had passed before it came so i was but i was very grateful because you know i think it's three times when you anything beyond the third time you have to wait for six months or something like that so it was still a, a relief that so when i got it i went to see my employer face to face before actually writing the resignation i didn't take my resignation with him with me when i was going so i told him that you know um i had registered to write the nmc exam he said yeah i know you're very smart blah 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 that's good he didn't know he thought i was coming to inform him that that was what i wanted to do moving forward i said oh i have i've passed the exam and he was like oh wow okay and he said so what next i said i would like to pursue a career in nursing and because you don't employ nurses that was what i used (laughs) as a means of escape you don't employ nurses like you don't have the the capacity to employ nurses here in the uk so i'll um, i'll be moving ahead to to follow my dream and apply and get a job so because of that, for me to be able to do that, I would want to resign so I can have that great time. I think you handled that quite brilliantly because yeah. you showed respect to him. I was already a team leader for my company. I had responsibilities. So that was the best way to go about it. Mm, it, it was it was not a very good thing for him. I know he has obviously missed or lost out a, a potential, maybe coordinator or something, because he had approached me with such type of questions that where do you see yourself in two years? Um, you know, would you like to be a coordinator? There are some courses that we could register for you and things like that. We've had those type of conversations before. So I knew that he was looking up to doing a lot of things with me. Yeah, so he he was like, okay, it wasn't so good, but he had to accept it. So what they did was, when I came, we have residential, dementia, and nursing unit. So after I got my CBT, they moved me from my residential unit to the nursing unit, so that I would be getting used to the nursing environment before I get my my OSCE. So they had already prepared us that. We are the nurses. Well, he was good in a, in the sense that he offered me the car. My my company had because we told me like you have to be driving. So when I came in, they got a car for me and then and all of that. So he told me I should get give an offer on the car, what I think, and then just take it. I think that's a good person. Honestly. Yes, yes, and so that was what we did, and yeah, so that was how it ended. So care home or NHS? Where are you going? I'm not leaving. I'm still with them. Everyone needs a plan. I think my plan, I know what I want. And um, NHS is good. My career development and stuff are all there. But I think my first two years, I need to catch some bags before. So I need to hold some money. I need to do some saving. And then this rate is a bit better. I don't need to overstress. I don't like doing night shifts. 
where I am now, um, I do only day shift. But when I go to NHS, definitely I will do night shift. None. Private hospital. It's not yeah. even a hospital, it's a dialysis center. Okay. It's more like a community thing. Like and they offer the case of sponsorship. Yes, they do. Have you started working? Yes, I started working on the 13th of March already. Wow. Yes. wow, wow. So I'm now working four days and I'm having three days off. I'm enjoying wow. it. <laughs> so you have a good employer and you've been working for this um, employer as a care assistant for a while. Yeah. Now you have your pin. And then now they are changing your employment to a nest. They, they've changed already. Long Yay! Time. This is a success story, and I'm so happy that you came here on the channel some months prior as a care assistant, and now you are here as a nurse. It's such a blessing, such an honor, and yeah, see that as well. I'm so happy for you. You've done well because working 12-hour shifts four times a week. It's not easy. Once in a while, picking overtime just to make ends meet. It's, it's not once in a while. No. <laughs> And studying, studying for the OSCE on your own and booking on your own and doing regulating. Everything it, was bad. It's, it's tough. Yeah. It's, uh, tough. It's, tough. it's yeah. tough. You've done really, really well. Oh. And I'm so proud of you. What advice would you give to other people that are here as care assistants and want to switch to nursing? I just tell them to act and act fast. Don't procrastinate. There's no best time to start. Just start immediately. Don't think about the monies if mostly you're going to be self sponsored like me. Just start. You just have to be focused. It is a hard work, like it was very difficult closing from work. You know, you could you leave home like seven o'clock, come home eight to nine. You, know, you have to study. The work side is not that easy. Like if you need to do the training for a while before you sit for the OSCE, make sure that you're confident. It's not it's not it's not a race. Don't procrastinate. Because I know a lot of people, Nanel, who are nurses who have come in and they'll be like, Oh, I'll do this and I'll do that. And it's been five years. But they've still not done it. I wish you all the best in your journey. You. And I hope that you come back here saying that you are now band six, you are now band seven. Yay. You are now band seven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. <laughs>